Diagnosed with hypothyroidism but not sure if it's Hashimoto's? Watch this video and by the end you'll be able to define Hashimoto's, know how to test for it, and understand why medication might not be solving all your symptoms. For the best information when it comes to natural health care for your thyroid, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell. That way you're notified whenever I post a new video every Thursday. Over the past five years, I've helped hundreds of patients better understand their thyroid and figure out whether or not Hashimoto's plays a role in their symptoms. Once we do that, we can help them get their life back. Now it's your turn. Let's get started. Before we jump into Hashimoto's and what that means, we have to first define hypothyroidism. Now to me, hypothyroidism has never been a good diagnosis because it's simply a description of symptoms. Essentially, someone's been experiencing things like fatigue or weight gain, hair loss, brittle nails and dry skin, and we notice that their TSH is increasing on their labs and their T4 is low. Once that happens, you've been diagnosed with hypothyroidism. But I often think of it kind of like saying someone has right knee pain. It doesn't really tell us what's going on, it just tells us that we have symptoms. If we're talking about a knee, we want to know, does that person have an ACL tear? Do they have a sprained knee capsule? Because if they just sprained their knee, they might just need ice. But if they tore their ACL, they may need to do surgery. So depending on what the cause of the knee pain is, will then dictate what we need to do for treatment. The same sort of thing goes for our thyroid, especially when we're talking about hypothyroidism. So if hypothyroidism is an increase in TSH and a lowering of T4 on labs, plus the associated symptoms, where does Hashimoto's fit in with all of this? Well, just like we talked about an ACL tear being the cause of right knee pain, Hashimoto's is one of the causes of hypothyroidism. And in fact, it's the number one cause of hypothyroidism in iodine replete countries, meaning countries that have enough iodine in their food system. But what is Hashimoto's? Hashimoto's is an autoimmune condition that is specific for our thyroid gland. And if you're not familiar with autoimmunity, essentially what it is, is our immune system normally should fight off things like bacteria, viruses, and parasites. But if it stops functioning normally, it can start to target our own tissues and glands. So in the case of Hashimoto's, that target site for our immune system is certain enzymes and proteins in our thyroid. And when these things are attacked, it leads to low hormone output which then leads to low thyroid symptoms. Again, this is the cause of that low thyroid hormone output. The way this actually works is our immune system creates these small proteins called antibodies. And normally these antibodies are for those things I just mentioned, the infectious bugs that can cause us harm. But in the case of Hashimoto's, those antibodies stick to proteins in our thyroid gland, specifically TPO enzymes and TG proteins. When this happens, it's kind of like gumming up the works of a factory. Your thyroid is essentially just that. It's a factory whose job is to produce thyroid hormone. So if we start to break down the machinery that allows us to do that, then we're not going to churn out as much thyroid hormone as we normally should, and all of our cells will suffer because of that. So if we know that autoimmunity can be a problem for our thyroid function and the amount of thyroid hormone that we produce, how do we test for it? Well, it's actually pretty easy, and a lot of times these tests are just being skipped and most people don't know about it. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that whenever you have a thyroid panel ordered, you also have TPO antibodies and TG antibodies as part of that panel. TPO, or thyroid peroxidase, is an enzyme that's found within the thyroid gland. I kinda think of it like the worker elves of the thyroid. It helps to put thyroid hormone together and helps get it shipped out. TG, or thyroglobulin, is the actual protein backbone that's used for thyroid hormone. Both of these can be attacked by our immune system. Since both can be attacked, we have to test for both. And sometimes I see people only getting tests for TPO antibodies. But if either one of these markers is positive, if it's outside of the normal reference range, that is indicative of Hashimoto's. But to be clear, the positive antibodies on these tests do not necessarily indicate whether or not we are hypothyroid yet. So Hashimoto's is defined by either the positive TPO antibodies or the positive TG antibodies. But if we don't have an elevation in TSH and a decreased T4, then we can't say we're hypothyroid. If someone has normal thyroid markers but positive antibodies, we call this euthyroid Hashimoto's, meaning the thyroid is still functioning normally like it should, but the presence of antibodies could lead to destruction of the thyroid gland down the line. 
it can eventually lead to the point where those TPO and TG proteins in our thyroid gland aren't functioning like they should, we can't crank out enough thyroid hormone, and therefore the Hashimoto's euthyroid eventually progresses to Hashimoto's hypothyroidism. Now, if you could take one thing away from this video, it would be that one nuance, that one difference, understanding that hypothyroidism is a whole different ballgame than Hashimoto's hypothyroidism, and it's defined by the presence of positive TPO or TG antibodies on your labs. Once you get that, you'll have a much better understanding about how your thyroid works, and you'll have much better outcomes for your health. Now, if you've been confused by your doctor's explanations of what's been going on with your thyroid in the past, just comment yes below, and I know that you have been through the same sort of rigmarole that a lot of my patients have been through before. So if hypothyroidism is low thyroid hormone output, leading to all the symptoms you've been experiencing, and Hashimoto's is the cause of that low hormone output, why hasn't your medication been working for you the way you would like it to? The reason for that is whenever the medical system looks at low thyroid hormone or low T4 on labs, the first thing it does is it seeks to replace that low hormone, usually using medication. The problem with this is it never addresses the actual cause. And I kind of think of it like if you had a bucket whose job was to carry water and it had a hole at the bottom, you wouldn't want to continually fill that bucket with more water. You'd want to patch the hole. And in this case, Hashimoto's is the hole in the bucket. So sure, people can take medication like Synthroid, Levothyroxine, or Armor, and it will bring up blood levels of T4 and lead to a reduction of TSH. But this does nothing to address the actual immune system dysfunction. And until we do that, the inflammation and the damage that is associated with that autoimmunity will actually block the functionality and binding of your own T4 and the synthetic or medication T4 to your cells. Therefore, if you can't have that last step where thyroid hormone actually binds to the cell and drives its metabolism, doesn't matter what else is going on, it is going to lead to low thyroid symptoms of that cell, of that tissue, wherever we are in the body. Therefore, if we wanna see real change, we have to move away from the idea that we want to continually replace our thyroid hormone because this is gonna get worse and worse over time if we don't properly address the immune system. Once we look at triggers and things that flare our immune system up, then we can start to decrease that inflammation, allow our thyroid gland to heal, and improve thyroid hormone output. The things that we always want to attend to include things like diet, sleep, exercise, and stress as some of the biggest components that can be negative impactors on our immune system. Now you know what Hashimoto's hypothyroidism means and how to get tested. You also know that we can't just focus on medication to replace our low thyroid hormone. You have to focus on different types of stressors that can affect our immune system. But what are the first changes you can make? To help you out, I've written you a food guide that includes the best diet you can follow when you find out you have Hashimoto's. And you can download that from the link in the description below. If you like this video, hit that like button, be sure to subscribe, and share this with a friend or family member who would benefit from learning more about their thyroid. I'm Dr. Brad Bodel, and I'm looking forward to talking with you guys real soon.